This video is made possible with the help of PelicanParts.com, your one-stop shop for all of your DIY projects. Welcome back to PCA's YouTube channel. Today we've taken a little field trip. We're at Turbo Performance Center in Jessup, Maryland. The reason being is they have an in-ground dyno that we're gonna put a product to the test. This is the IPD Plenum, and we're gonna install it on a 1999-996. The vehicle is completely stock currently, and we're gonna do a base dyno pull. We're gonna then video the installation of this plenum, and then we're gonna put it back on the dyno to see if it makes real power. All right, so now we're inside the garage, right next to the dyno. The team at TPC has positioned the car, they've strapped it down, and I'm here with Tom Chan. Tom, what's next? Well, once we have this strapped down, we're gonna uh, make a dyno run, and this is our baseline run. It's important for us to establish the baseline number so we know exactly what the gains are and uh, we get the car up to a very specific oil temp so we can duplicate the conditions. Now this is a stock 996, 1999. I believe it was around 295, 299 horsepower when it was new. Hopefully this baseline run will show that this car still has that power. Yeah, that's true. Um, we dyno a number of these cars when they were new and newer, and they were around 250. 50 to 255 at the wheels on our dyno jet. Occasionally we get one that hits 260. So um, again, this is our dyno jet in ground model 248C. And this is the same dyno that's used by NASCAR to um, measure the performance from one competitor to another. So it's a very accurate equipment. All right, well, let's do this. Okay, so now that we've done the baseline pull, we're getting ready to do the plenum swap. But before we do the swap, Tom's gonna share with you a few tips to be careful when you're doing this. So this is a 1999 car, so it is 20 years old. Uh, beside the plenum are two rubber sleeves, and these sleeves connect the plenum to each side of the intake manifold, which is made from plastic. There had been occasions where um, the rubber and possibly the intake manifold needed to be replaced. So we want to be extra careful, uh, especially if this is your only car and you're doing this on a Sunday, you need to drive it to work on Monday. So you want to have a plan B, such as buying an extra pair of uh, rubber sleeves. They're not expensive. Even though they're not bad, it's good to replace them anyway because of the age of the car. Okay, so we're getting started with the install of the plenum. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to loosen this worm clamp to your throttle body to loosen this intake area. Then you're going to want to disconnect your mass air sensor. And then there's a bolt on the front of your air box that secures the air box to the frame of the car. And once you remove that, this simply lifts out of place. And some people only re remove this piece, but you know, make yourself some room. It's super easy to take this air box out. So we decided to take it all out. And right now Mike has um, down there disconnected the throttle body. I'm sorry, not throttle body, but the um, this is a cable throttle car. So he's disconnected the throttle. This is almost like a old school bicycle uh, brake cable, so to speak. And you just uh, 
pull on it, twist it, and it pops right off. And now what we've done is we've removed the bolts that hold the throttle body to the factory plenum. And uh, we've disconnected the sensor here that goes to the throttle body as well. And uh, we'll slowly start taking that apart. So we've taken out the stock plenum. Just want to point out a couple of things to you. These rubber rings ha have a little step in them. So w even though you've loosened the, the worm gear clamps here, to get them to fit to slide over this uh, plastic tube here, you're going to kind of have to force it. You saw that we used a little pry bar to kind of stretch the rubber to move it over top of it a bit to give you enough room to pivot the uh, factory plenum out. Um, another point, there is a vacuum line right here. Hopefully you can see where my finger is. Just be careful of that. Obviously you don't want to break it, move it, uh, so on and so forth. And then also, uh, just to reiterate again, Tom mentioned earlier that this plastic line here can be uh, pretty fragile. Note that this line here, although you're not doing anything to it directly, this hose you had to remove from the factory plenum and you'll have to connect it to the new plenum. But this here actually is connected together to this hard line. So once you connect it, there's plenty of room to move it, but be careful not to move it so much so that you cause this to move in any sort of direction or any sort of extreme direction causing this hard plastic line to crack. So again, just be very careful as things are a little bit older uh, with this car and you don't want to do any undue damage. So I've read the IPD uh, website. I am not an engineer by any stretch of the imagination, so I'm going to try to summarize to you what the goal is uh, with regards to installing this uh, aftermarket plenum. So if you notice, this is the factory one here. It is more of a traditional T shape. So it's a perpendicular air comes through here, hits the wall in the back, and that gets dispersed to the sides, into the intakes. If you look at the IPD plenum, what you'll notice is instead of a T shape, internally it's more of a Y shape. So the air comes in instead of crashing, so to speak, into the back wall, it, the air gets divided and redirected into the intakes. And then also if you notice the interior of the IPD plenum, it's dimpled. Uh, I don't know the correct uh, technical term, but that has to do with creating you know, better flow. Um, basically what you're trying to do is get your engine to um, breathe more freely and getting the air into the intakes as fast as possible. So we've hit a little snafu, as sometimes you do with a project. It's not a huge deal. Earlier I had mentioned about being careful not to move this too much. No fault of the mechanic. Um, he literally just barely pushed this over to the right to get this hose fitting back onto the plenum. And because these two are joined, it wiggled this piece here. And just you saw a, a fountain of coolant come out of it. And it's simply because this plastic in here has aged. And so maybe it's a good thing that it happened here in a controlled environment where we can go ahead and replace this piece and 
you know, we'll have a nice sturdier um, piece to make sure that this won't happen in the future. No big deal. We'll take care of it and then we'll move on. So we just buttoned everything up, put the throttle body back in place, did all the connectors, um, put the intake, and obviously the air box back in. So what I wanted to show you, remember when I was talking about how be careful with this hose and um, potentially cracking the connector piece. Well, guess what? Even though we were extremely careful, uh, it's still cracked. And the reason being is this is a 20-year-old car, and this piece that was a junction for one tube, coolant tube here, and another coolant tube um, on this side of it, uh, really just a little wiggle of that uh, hose cracked crack the top of it. And in fact, when we took out this bracket to replace it, the bottom cracked as well. So, you know, it, it's um, a pain in the behind, so to speak, to, to have this happen when you're in the middle of the job. But, you know, I'm going to look at the bright side. The bright side is this could have wiggled or cracked while I was driving on a road trip or something like that. So we've gone ahead and repaired it and we've actually repaired it with a brass junction and um, we're gonna leave that in there and see how it does. As, you know, brass isn't gonna deteriorate. We're gonna order another piece, a newer piece, and uh, we'll probably replace that later. But for now, just to get everything buttoned back up and we can continue to uh, see how the plenum um, upgrades the car's power, so to speak, we're gonna put it all back together and get the dyno started again. One observation I wanted to share with you guys. So the I didn't measure the, the plenum side by side when they were out, but as we were putting everything together, we noticed that the IPD plenum sits a little bit further towards the back of the car. And this particular bracket here would not have lined up. It's not a big deal because everything is very solid, but what, what we did was we went ahead and removed this bracket and uh, it's just a simple one screw there, pulled it off. No, no reason to have it hanging there. So once we put everything back together, again, you can tell everything is still very solid. We just finished the last dyno pull. I'm here with Mike Levitis, owner of TPC, longtime PCA member, and uh, recent Tremblant winner? Yeah, Tremblant. That's right, in the rain. Rain race, we, we did it. There you go. Congratulations on that. But I brought him here because now we're looking at graphs. Can you tell me a little bit at what we're looking at? And uh, I think it's a positive. Oh, no, it's definitely a positive, though. I mean, it's really it's uh, plain to see. Um, it's really a nice, nice gain. You've got, uh, you know, eight to 10 horsepower gain under the curve and area. You know, I wouldn't be so concerned with peak RPM as much as look how much the torque and the horsepower have been smoothed out over the factory. Um, and really even the uh, smoothing is turned down. So this is actually what you would expect to feel in the car would be these nice gains under the curve. So look from, uh, 3,500 to 5,000 RPM, real nice chunk of torque. Uh, you can see that the smoothed out, you know, areas under the curve and above 
you could expect due to the uh, increased airflow in the uh, intake manifold. So let's talk about that. We we uh, did a shot of the plenum. Um, I'm not an engineer, uh, but you are much more uh, well-versed in that. Can you tell me what that plenum does? Well, I think IPD did a great job on this. Um, really, my hat's off to them. What they've done is they've created a uh, Venturi, and so they've got a... Uh, uh, basically a focal point to where the air is accelerated and when it picks up speed like that it's obviously enhancing even the multi-valve configuration it's picking up the airflow into the cylinder head I mean that's quite obvious so the whole idea the whole point behind this exercise was to test can you really add on one bolt-on piece to a Porsche and make a significant difference and I think it's important to understand that you're not looking for total horsepower difference gain you're looking at what it's going to do over the cross of the curve and how it's going to be drivable you know will it be more drivable will it be more fun to drive well I think that I think you actually hit it Vu, because really what you really do want to do is see all of the gains broadly across the curve not just in the peak area because you don't drive the car at the peak area and even on a Porsche with a flat six a small displacement engine even the race cars we've got to optimize an RPM range and this really is a street car with a longer ratio you know gears on the gearbox it's got a you know pretty tall gear on the you know final drive so this would make the car accelerate all the time so you're gonna notice this yeah, and well, I think where I'm most impressed is the, with the torque curve because if you look between three and a half thousand uh, or 3.5 and about 5.5, you see a big chunk of difference there, and that's where we normally drive at. So uh, I'm expecting some some fun there. I I would expect you to feel exactly what you said, from 35 to 55. But don't forget, you still have a torque increase from 55 to seven grand which is gonna keep the crankshaft accelerating. And I'll bet you see to the pants, the car seems smoother to drive because we could hear it on the dyno. So thank you again to Mike and the folks at TPC. You know, this was an exercise to see if we can add one different part onto a 911 and see a significant gain. Uh, it was fairly easy to do. Uh, I would definitely make sure you read the instructions, the very clear instructions from IPD. We gave you a few tips in terms of, you know, brittle plastic pieces so that you can be prepared for that. But once you get it all done, I think you're gonna enjoy this upgrade.